face. Go to them and apologize. If I made you feel uncomfortable, I'm sorry. If I made you feel pressured, I'm sorry. If I made you feel like our relationship was only important if you were going to be a customer or a distributor, I'm sorry. You're my friend, you're my family. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Please forgive my excitement and enthusiasm and my focus that I really thought that you would be a perfect fit for this and rather than finding out what you want, I gave you what I saw in you versus maybe what you saw in an opportunity here. I apologize for that. If I ever make you feel uncomfortable, I don't want you to go, oh, is so-and-so coming to Thanksgiving? I don't want you to feel that way ever. These are some of the people you can text and say, can we just sit down and get caught up on each other's lives and don't bring it up at all? You will re-warm up your warm market. Your, some of your warm market has become cold market, hasn't it? You can re-warm it up by just building a relationship. Guess what happens? Guess what every friend knows about their other friend? They know what business they're in. They know what's going on in that business if they're friends. So if you develop a relationship with this warm market that's been a little bit annoyed with you, they're going to ask you. They're going to test you first. They're going to sit and wait. When's the pitch going to start? And when it does, they're going to go, okay, 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 what's going on with the business? Tell me. They say, you know, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. No, it's okay. All right. Here's what's happening. I'm really excited to put on. Okay? So, find a process. Even within your core market, it's going to take a little bit of work to build out that list. You have unlimited people to talk to. That's number one. Number two is inviting. I don't have time today to go through the eight-step invitation process by phone, but we did this exercise this morning. How many people have gotten more appointments since this morning? Look at the room. How many people have more appointments scheduled in the next 30 days than you had in the last 30 days? Now, if you imagine that same thing happening with your organization, that simple little concept, what I'm searching for all the time is what's a simple thing that will work for a large group of people? And I think what we talked about this morning is one of those simple things. When, we're in, when we are inviting and we're wanting to expose someone to our product or opportunity, what is our goal, what is our purpose? Education. education and understanding. Education and understanding is not sales or recruiting. Education and understanding with education and with understanding will come the sale and will come the recruit. You don't need to worry about that. You do need to have some skill on it. We're going to need to work on making sure that we do that skillfully and we make that transition skillfully. We're going to talk about that this afternoon. But education and understanding is critical in the inviting process. Three is presenting. I'm going to give you a few fundamentals on presenting. I've been in this business a long time, or I've up until I retired from the field. I, I was in the fields for a long time. And maybe this will, you can relate to this. Phase one of my presenting life was I didn't present at all. I just dragged bodies. I was a professional body dragger. I dragged somebody over and saying, here, listen to this person. I'd drag them in front of a TV set and I'd say, here, watch this video. I didn't present at all. All I did was drag bodies. And I think body dragging is actually a pretty good way to start. 
start your business. I know it sounds weird, but isn't that what we do? That's phase one. Phase two is superhero stage. Where I became the thing that everyone dragged bodies to. Yeah, I'm a prospect, bring them to me. So I taught people to be body draggers. To me, I was the event. And you gotta be careful that you don't get stuck in that phase because it feeds your ego, but it takes away from your future. Because there's other people that want to have that stage too, so they're gonna start to resent that a little bit that they're having to drag bodies through all the time. Number two, nobody works unless you're in the room. If you're in the room, they're working. If you're on the freeway call with them, they're working. All the rest of the time, they're waiting for the king or the queen to be available. They're not working in between. So you gotta make sure you come up with a process where, one, you have a system to present that you can drag bodies in front of. Maybe it's your company tool, maybe it's telling your product story, maybe it's your company website, maybe it's the documentary. What are you dragging bodies to? That's number one. Number two, you need to become a good presenter at some point. You need to be able to be talented at telling the story if you want your career to go to another level. At some point, you do need to go past body dragging and having the skills for a whole bunch of reasons. Reason number one is you're going to get mentally clearer on your business by repeating it over and over and over again. Number two, your group will start to perform at a higher level because they'll be proud of you and they say, I can't wait to introduce you to this person. They're proud of that, okay? And then you're showing an example of other people that can come up behind you and teach them how to do the presentation. The little process that I've used over the years is one, learn how to tell your story. Write this down, learn how to tell your story. Every one of you needs to have a story that, that lands somewhere in the 60 to 120 second range. Okay, story. Let me give you four elements of your story, and all of you should craft your story this weekend. One is your background. I used to be a teacher. I have been this my whole life. I've been that my whole life. I've done this, I've done that. I've been this, I've been that. Why is that important? It humanizes you, and if you're giving a testimonial in front of a group, I'll call or whatever, Somebody has a chance to relate to you, and maybe they don't relate to the person that's trying to share the opportunity with them. See what I mean? So, what's your background? Um, bad things. I don't know how else to say it. I'll just say bad things. Um, here's what I mean by bad things. Hey, I've been a teacher for 22 years, and I love helping people understand things. I love my students. However, bad things. I never really got paid what I was worth. It was a very political environment. I had to deal with politics as much as I had to deal with teaching. I looked at my future, and I saw that teachers weren't being as respected as I hoped they would be in our society, and I finally realized maybe my teaching skills would be better served in a different environment than the one I was in, right? So I worked roofing houses. 
I was good at it. Making something, fixing something, making something happen. But, it's hard on your body. You have a lot of ups and downs when it comes to the economy. You have feasting, you have famine. You get bad weather, and all of a sudden you're out of work for what could be weeks. It was the ups and downs just got to be too much. Bad things. Whatever you didn't like, you might love whatever it is your background, pieces of it. I've been a homemaker for 15 years. I love my kids. However, <laughs> I have something in me that I want to show the world. I want to show my kids. I want to make this thing happen. And I was just looking for it. Okay? So whatever that is, three, found out marketing, slash your company, slash your product. So here's my background, here's some of the things that were I was dissatisfied with, maybe dissatisfied is better for the second one than bad things. But you know what I mean, right? Read between the lines. And then guess what? I found a solution to those bad things. In this unexpected place. This company showed up, this product showed up, and it gave me a vision what I might be able to do. And in part four, your feelings about the future. Slash your results. Don't want you going out there making crazy claims. But it would be okay to say, here's my background, here's some of the bad things. I found And maybe what happened to you is just the feeling that you have about the future. And for the first time, you might have not made a nickel, but for the first time, I feel hopeful about the future. For the first time, I'm on track. For the first time, I see freedom for me. For the first time, I feel fulfilled. I feel I have purpose. I feel like I can help my fellow human being. See what I mean? For the first, here's how I feel. Now if you want, if you want to say, you know, guess what, in my first month I made $500 and I was able to take the kids to the amusement park. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> See what I mean? Every one of you should have this story. And I will tell you what, one of the greatest gifts I had They were killer when it came to the story, the testimonial. And what helped shape me is at their conventions the night before, Jeff would host an opportunity meeting at that session. And he would have, after they told the story, they would have a parade of testimonials. And, I, and then they would make a videotape of that that people could use to go recruit. And tell them to tell the story in their own piece. I, I wanted to be on that team so bad. You have no idea how bad I wanted to be on that video at age 23. So I worked on my story. I knew if it was longer than 30 or 45 seconds, it wasn't going to make the cut. I knew it. And I could be the young guy. Maybe he'll pick the young guy to go on there next to all the big rock stars. And the first time I did it, I didn't get picked. Second time I did it, I got picked. I don't have it with me, but I can show it to you. I have hair, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
But my story followed this simple formula. And once I had my story, and it was under a minute, if I met someone, I told them my story. If I was in an elevator, they said, what do you do? I said, well, I tell them my story. On a three-way call, I told them my story. When I started a home meeting, at the very beginning of the home meeting, I told them my story. At the local opportunity meeting at the hotel, I told them my story. And then I told other people how to tell their story. And here's the thing that happens. Once you get solid with your story, there isn't 200 people in this room that have a story that would just blow our socks off. If you came up here on stage to tell it, because you go for two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. I'm talking tight, strong, compelling, interesting, curiosity building. What's your story? Are you ready? If we brought you up on this stage, would you blow us away with no notice? Because if the answer is no, you've got to work on your story. I wrote it down. And then I told it, and I recorded my own voice to it. If it didn't sound right, I wrote it down again. And I wrote it down again until I got strong. And once I got strong, now I had a bridge to be able to go anywhere I wanted to go. Learn how to tell your story. Learn how to tell your opportunity. How to present your opportunity. Let me tell you what I did with that. This is another thing that changed my life. I have a lot of these. But this is another one. Back to Jeff again. He was the number one presenter. We number one earner in our company but way back almost 30 years ago. So I said, well, and he did the same exact presentation every single time. Same jokes. Same intro, same close, same exact words, did not change at all. I said, well, he's number one, he never changes. Maybe I should model that presentation. So I recorded it. I have a little mini miniature recorder. I recorded his presentation. And then I took a piece of paper, I had a label pad, and I wrote it out word for word. Play, pause, rewind, play, pause, rewind, play, pause, rewind. Until I had it all written down word for word on a label pad. And then I took a boot box. Remember boot boxes? Remember when you could buy the audio cassettes to different lengths? 80 minutes, 60 minutes. Remember? I miss audio cassettes. I do, honestly. I miss them. Because they would play, they'd stop if you stop, and then they would pick you back up and you'd play again. And when the tape was over, it would just flip over. And it would just start playing the other side. It was the most awesome thing. Now, CDs, they don't stop when you stop. When it's over, it's just over. It doesn't start back at the first again. Anyway, I'll get over it. But, I don't like it. I learned so much with audio cassettes, I have an emotional attachment to them. I still have them in a big, huge case in my house. Love my audio cassettes. I know that's weird. So then I recorded my voice into a boombox on a Memorex cassette tape that I bought. And then I played it back and I went, oh my God, I can't believe that's how I sound. That's the worst sounding thing I've ever heard. Energy was terrible, it was monotone, nobody would listen to that, who would sign up for that. Nobody, ever. So I recorded it again and again and again and again. Finally got it down. So it was, it was okay. And then I recorded it on both sides of the audio cassette so it would keep flipping over. I kept it in my car and I listened to it about a thousand times until I had it memorized. It was like a monologue. It was like a one-man play. If you told me, tell me about the products, I'm there. I got it. What's the intro? I'll tell you the intro. What's the close? I'll tell you the close. 
ladies and gentlemen, this ends the first part of our presentation. The next part of our presentation is when you circle up and get together with the people who brought you here this evening. They can answer your questions and they can help you get started if you'd like. Everybody have a great night. That's how it goes out every single time. That's how it happens. Once I have that opportunity, I believe, you know what I found out in network marketing? It doesn't take much for you to be extraordinary in your company. It doesn't take much. If you become amazing at the opportunity presentation, guess what? They will be talking about you at the home office within 30 days. It doesn't take much for you to be a rock star. Guess what? It doesn't take much for you to own your city. You know what it takes for you to own the city? And here's what I mean by this. In every town, with every company, there's three or three to five people that own the city. They, they run everything, all money rolls through them, three to five in every company, in every city in the world. Three to five, maximum. And guess what it takes to say, I'd like to be one of those three to five? The decision. Say, I'll take one of those spots, please. All you have to do is decide. It's like, it's like the best job in the world and there's unlimited vacancies. Come take one, please. So, I learned the opportunity and I separated myself so fast I started to be talked about inside the company because I was Hitting, hitting, making things happen with the local meeting. I was getting people signed up. I was getting momentum. I was making it happen. And then I learned if I stayed doing all the presentations too, too long, then I wasn't going to get growth. So here was the, the flow. One was story. And then we had our opportunity presentation broken into different segments. There was the product segment. There was the opportunity segment. Excuse me, there was the company segment. And there was competition by the opportunity segment. We had three different people doing the, the presentations. The least expensive, uh, expensive, the least experienced person would do the products. They'd come up to them, let us tell you what the product or service does. Bing, 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 bing. Then the next experienced person would do the company. Let me tell you about the quality of our company. Da, 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 da. The most experienced person would do the compensation plan and the testimonial. Bang, 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 bang. And that was the order. One, you learned how to do a testimonial. You come up and do a testimonial. Two, you graduated the product. Three, you graduated the company. Four, you graduated the compensation and hosting the event. Five, you become a presenter and a trainer. And you move yourself through the ranks. That was the hierarchy of how we grew leaders, how we got people to say the words. Something happens when people say the words. Not hear the words. Guess who gets to learn the most from Never Parking Pro Shows? Not you that hears it, but me that has to say it. I gotta think about it, I gotta say it. If I say it enough, my conviction goes up. If you say your opportunity story enough times, it burns a groove in your mind, and that groove in your mind will allow you to act when more times than not, you'll get discouraged. You need to go out and say the words. Don't be hiding behind another presenter. Learn to say the words. The words will give you a foundation to be able to be a better presenter. You with me? So who's ready to, to commit to becoming a better presenter, world class in the next 12 months?
12 minute talk. Guess how I learned how to do that talk? I had no idea how I was going to do it. I said yes. I told the world. And then I figured it out. And you know what figuring it out was for me? Because I lacked the, the experience and I lacked the skill. I practiced more than anybody else. I put everything to practice. I practiced for 90 days straight. I practiced and memorized and looked for quotes and looked for key comments and looked for everything I could possibly look for because it's the hardest thing in the world to do a 10 to 12 minute talk. Do a three hour talk for a problem for me. Do a 10 to 12 minute talk where you really have to count every word. That's a challenge, right? But here's what I learned again. It doesn't take much to separate you from the rest of the, your, the people in your company. That separated me in a massive way and it made my group proud of me. Right? You can do the same. Be prepared that if the company says, hey, you've got 10 minutes, don't go, I want to thank the team, I want to thank everybody. Love you so much. It's the greatest opportunity ever since. <laughs> you know how many conventions I see speaking of conventions? I'm so tired of it. The lazy, 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 lazy speaking from top earners. Think about the gift that you can give with words, right? Think about the gift you can give. You can change somebody's life with 10 minutes. 10 minutes. You can change their life. I saw this documentary on Orson Welles. Orson Welles created the uh, Citizen Kane and a whole bunch of different things over the course of his life. And there was this documentary, it was like a, a movie about his life. And I don't know if you know, but they were getting ready to release Citizen Kane, and William Randolph Hearst, who the movie is based on, was furious and one of the richest men in the world. And he came down on all those studios and says, if you release it, I will unleash hell on, the, on all of these studios. Do not do it. So they brought Orson Welles into a meeting. All these producers, they say, we know we spent all this money, but it's just too risky. We've got this guy that's too bad. So we're going to burn the negatives. True story. <coughs> and Orson Welles gives them a talk that is so spectacular, I can even start to try to replicate it. And he goes, they, they when he's done, they invite him to wait in the hallway. And his manager comes out just going and sits down next to him in the hallway and said, I can't believe it. They're going to let you release me. He said, that was a pretty little speech. And Orson Welles turned to him and said, pretty little speech has changed the world. I think that's true. So the next time you have an opportunity for a pretty little speech, make it something that people will remember 10 years from today, not just 10 minutes from today in the hallway saying, hey, Adam, boy, that was amazing. How can you paint everyone? <laughs> Give them something. Okay? You with me? Be better. Don't raise your standards to the level of the people around you. Raise your standards to the highest possible you can imagine. It doesn't take much for you to be the entire talk of the company, but you have to prepare. Okay? So you with me on presenting? Presenting. Now I got to talk to you. This is uh, we're going to get into a little bit of closing, but before we get into the end of the presentation and into, into the close, I want to talk to you about follow up for a moment. Okay? Follow up. Follow up. Here's what you need to understand when it comes to follow up. It's going to take between four and six exposures on average before a person says, yes, I'm ready to get involved. Sign me up. 